Welcome in to Greenville Grit. This is Greenville Residents in Touch with your hosts, Terry Williams and Michael Overton. This is the show that keeps you connected and in touch with the issues that affect what's happening in your community. Greenville Grit is sponsored by Greenville Toyota, the Overton Group, and Bill Clark Homes. Now, here are your hosts for Greenville Grit, Terry Williams and Michael Overton. Good evening and welcome to the Greenville Grit. I am Terry Williams. I am Michael Overton and alongside us is our Greenville Gritter. Dennis Mitchell. All right, yeah, Dennis. Yeah, thank you for coming back on Thanks today. You. Thanks for having me. Terry, what are we going to talk about today? We've got a lot, a lot to talk about, especially with this bond and city tax increases. So where do you want to start? Well, we've got the bond proposal still in discussion. We've got tax increases in discussion. We've got city council meetings next week talking about the proposed budget. Mm. So I think we've got a lot. We won't cover it all today. We a co- About a couple of weeks ago, we started a discussion on the bond, and I, we feel like we better continue that. We'll probably do it for the next two or three shows and give as much information out as we can so that everybody can draw their own conclusions. And well, if you don't like what you're hearing or you have questions that you want answered, get down to the meetings next week and voice your opinion. Well, Sign before up. Before we get into the meat of this conversation, <laughs> we have to thank our sponsors, right. Greenville Toyota, current thinking uh, Craig goes for his continued support of the show. Looking for a new Toyota or Scion vehicle or a new used car? Go see Greenville Toyota on Memorial Drive. Also, the Overton Group, the real Thank estate you, and property management professionals with offices in Greenville and in New Bern. We do commercial real estate sales and leasing, uh, business brokerage, and property management. Um, right. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We're going to come back with Terry and Dennis and get into talking about the bond. See you in two minutes. Welcome back to the Greenville Grid. I'm Michael Overton alongside with my co-host, Terry Williams. We have Dennis Mitchell back on tonight, former city councilman and our, our own Greenville Gritter. Um, we're going to talk about the bond, Terry and, and Dennis. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, Dennis, being on the city council for two years, you've got a, a lot of history uh, with some of the things that they want to fund with this bond that we can talk about. But just uh, for the audience to hear, um, the definition of a bond is a certificate of evidence of debt issued by a governmental unit. The city borrows money from purchasers, those who buy the bonds, and they basically guarantee or the city guarantees um, to pay the bondholders interest in principle over a certain number of years. In most cases, uh, around 10 years, they can be as short as five years, 10 years, 20 years, excuse 20 me, years. 20 years. Mm-hmm. They could be up to 40 years. I believe most of what Greenville has done has been around 20 years. Uh, in our case, we're going to be doing a general obligation bond, and that is uh, pledging the full faith and credit of the city, and it has to be voted on by the people. There's some discussion of trying to get this thing done by this November. Um, that's probably, you know, I think we've, we've all talked about it. That's too fast. I don't there's see how there's no way it. in a bond because it, it doesn't happen. Well, in our case, every 10 years, mm-hmm. that if we do this, we're going to be shoving too much in there. We're going to miss something, probably put something in there that doesn't need to be in there. Mm-hmm. That's right. And we're not going to be able to correct it for 10 more years. So we've well, got to it, decide what needs to be involved that's in right. this. Well, I think we've still got studies out, mm-hmm. Tar River, Dickinson, Dickinson, Avenue. Cor- Dickinson Avenue Corridor. So we really feel like the necessity to get those surveys back in and then see how to include incorporate some of that into some of the items that are proposed in this budget only seems to make sense to uh, make it a more viable bond well maybe we can talk a little bit about the history of bonds the two that they gave in their presentation uh 1992 there was a 25 and a half million dollar bond and then back in 2004 so we're right at 10 years now and and uh probably halfway through this bond is uh was a 21 million dollar bond that last one included uh, street improvements right um west greenville revitalization center city revitalization and storm drainage Mm -hmm. can you uh dennis do you have any updates on where we are have they done uh any of what was discussed in this last bond yeah i believe majority of that um those items have been completed. Me and Terry both was on the redevelopment commission. I believe we depleted nearly all the money for West Greenville and the mm-hmm. city money um, that was available for that. And um, the Dickinson Avenue um, improvements that went along, I think a lot of us seen the where they painted the bridge and there's some stormwater improvements there. So I b- pretty much believe that all the projects with that bond in 2004 have been completed. I mean, so, I mean, we're right now right for a new bond. Right. Um, but like I said, I keep on saying we're in this transition point in Greenville 
whether we whether or not we want to take the city to the next level. So I agree with you guys. I think it's important that we take a step back, look at this from totality, and figure out how much money we want to spend. Because I'm I'm a, I'm agreeing that we're going to do a bond, let's do a big one. Right. But let's make sure that we're going to get a good return on investment um, for our citizens of Greenville, and it's going to take Greenville to the next level. Well, I agree. It needs to be a big bond. But what I would rather see our city do, and what is it? Someone told me Charlotte does one every five years. It's every two. Every two. Every years. two years. We need to be. Frankly, probably doing them more often, smaller, mm-hmm. but more often to cover uh, and stay on top of, of where we really want to go as a city. Every 10 years, a lot changes in 10 years. Well, changes. I think that um, I've heard some discussion from our mayor that I think that's kind of what he has in mind, maybe, that if we – I haven't talked to him. I've just been listening to comments that he's made that um, if we cannot – put all of this together, perhaps to, he's real concerned about our street improvements and perhaps throw in a bond out for maybe that amount of money this time and then coming back with the bond for everything else we need. I just don't know if that will fly to have them back to back. Well, let's talk about street improvements. Yeah, because I'm concerned about street, I'm concerned about street improvements <laughs> too, right. but I mean, what's the urgency to do it when we still have the money that the city council passed last year that I was on um, sitting there? Waiting to improve streets. So, right. I mean, has any of that money been dedicated towards a, a uh, small amount of it? I won't even say. I I be. I would guess maybe somewhere under a million dollars of it mm-hmm. has been spent. A couple hundred hundred thousand dollars been spent. But no, that money still been still sitting there. Um, so those improvements have not been made. I think they're keeping on saying they're waiting on this Google study where somebody went around and and, and measured all the roads in the city and trying to see which ones need to be improved. Mm-hmm. But I mean, some of the roads you don't have to measure. Right. I mean, there's roads that you can just drive around and know that need to be checked. So I'm kind of concerned about that delay that the city is taking with spending this money, and yet we're trying to go ask the voters to put more money mm-hmm. into it. Like, exactly. spend what we have first. Well, it looks like, too, if something is very important, needs to be done right now, it's an emergency situation, there's a little bit of money already set aside in that $5 million, whatever's left, to maybe do the most urgent and then take a real close look at what's really necessary. And I'm not saying that all the things they're proposing aren't necessary, but really take a good look at, at what they're proposing and and I still I have notes from our conversations before it still concerns me that West Greenville streetscape completion is not in the bond and I I know there's some discussion about maybe getting those funds through a different avenue but which I don't know if that's available and I, we don't know if we'll get it and so but maybe they can try that first for West Greenville and by delaying the bond we might have time to still work it in I don't know what the time frame um, is. I think Council Member Blackburn suggested that. I think if we do do a bron that does have some street, street improvements in there, that project needs to go. It's shovel ready. Right. Something that's been discussed since the Redevelopment Commission has been in process. And it's going to really open up that quarter, corridor between the hospital and downtown, I think, and, and, and probably entice more investment. Well, of uh, all the projects that are, are close that could be completed, that would be one of the first ones that could be could be done oh yeah and another finished. another important one is the 10th street connector exactly um there is because um the money has been allocated by the state to build this thing but the city has to put forth the money for the um the street improvements the sidewalks stuff like that mm-hmm. so i mean i think that's a real concern of the city manager is that we have that money available to to build a 10th street connector but the city doesn't have the funds to complete their part of it right. so um the city needs to have some way of coming up with that money so that's an important piece to it as well but um, like I said, we still go back to the point that the city has set aside money. I mean, the city council, city council last year noticed that we did have a street problem. We found the money by, you know, exploring that excess money that the city had gained over their revenues and, and using that money for that. And it's still sitting there, along with the $200,000 for the design of South Greenville, which everyone knows is a, is a huge, dire need. I mean, that building really needs to be right. torn down and redone over. So, I mean, I mean, when you talk about spending the city's money, the I mean, city is sitting on money, and, and the voters should be aware of that as well. Right. Now, on the first item here on the street improvements, it said um, it says includes resurfacing, microsurfacing, and reconstruction constructing 65 over 65 lane miles of roadway this 65 lane miles though isn't probably the major streets that we are used to oh, traveling no. on oh, no. the public might not realize that these would be city-owned streets which wouldn't be streets like uh well 10th street or greenville boulevard, greenville boulevard. um there's a lot of Evans your side street. streets is Evans especially street probably in the downtown street? area 
I don't think it, Evans Street. I think a portion of it may be. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Arlington Boulevard is probably one of the only major streets that you see around there that might be city maintained. Right. But pretty much the rest of them are all state maintained. And we're talking about what we're talking about is a lot of neighborhood streets. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, well, I, part I, of I, my concern too is is what they're proposing. Again, we all know this is a very initial proposal. Was is eight million dollars for street improvements. Go right back to what we were just talking about. We have five million. So is that eight million in addition to the five million? Or basically, they're going to take the five million that you set aside and spend it on something else. I, I suspect it will be the latter. I suspect it really will be the latter. If this bond passes as written right now, the city will take that seven point nine million for the street improvements and and somehow will reallocate that money that was set aside mm-hmm. um, that city council passed um, two years ago to somewhere else. Um, well, which I don't think should be <clears throat> legal, but I mean it's, it's done all the time in city government. So when they when like in for instance here when they propose this bond and they actually put it into place, will it list? where they want to use this will they say like certain neighborhoods certain areas or will that be up no. to the discretion of that department no i mean that'd, that'd probably be a, a so total separate thing no control yeah, over yeah. where yeah. it goes it, it, well i'm pretty sure they would give the well, city council some guidance to say these are the streets and i'm sure that they're, they're going to use the the um study that was done too to address hopefully right. the worst roads first but we've got an issue there we've got a th- this is something we're talking about maybe doing uh, the street improvement this fall but but hopefully looking to the bond for next fall and it's going to be a lot of discussion mm-hmm. on the show That's right. over the next year and and uh i know they're trying to put a group of people together to to discuss the bond advocacy committee but we have a proposed tax increase That's right. coming into city council that was asked to be in the budget without the attendance of candy uh-huh. so one of the council members was not even aware of it the mayor uh-huh. was not aware of it uh proposed and, and passed to have it included in the budget and is going to be voted on in June. So so not only are we asking the voters to take on a bond that could be a four cent tax increase uh, in a year, possibly some this fall, we're proposing at least a one cent tax increase this year. That is on top of, and I'm again, I'm a board of trustees member for Pitt Community College. We passed that bond. That is on top of the county tax increase that just hit this past fall in the last election. And we still don't know what the county's going to do now. I mean, no. their public hearing was a mess. I mean, that's a whole nother, that's <laughs> whole right. nother show so, yesterday. So, so um, th- th- this is this is just your Greenville City taxes. This isn't even have it, any indication at all what's happening on the county well, side well, of Michael, things. you just said so much right there, right. and I think it's important. I mean, yeah. it's probably my little biased 10-second vent. You know, we talked about one thing. I mean, I, I, I think the city council of two years took a lot of flack for a lot of things. Um, um, that was fictitiously made up and, 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 and put out there by Councilman Mercer. But that was one of them. Is I put on the agenda when I first started economic development in my first city council meeting. And we're lambasted about putting something on the agenda um, without giving the public notice. Right. And on um, this day, we put on the agenda talking about tax increase, and the public had oh, no notice that, whatsoever. By the way, that's the, that's the second thing, foreign related. Yeah, that Four happened. Related was voted quickly yeah. without yeah. any discussion. Any notice at all. So this, 60 days was gone. And, and, the, and the media, the, the newspaper is not giving them flack about it and not doing anything right. the way they did us two years ago. So that's a travesty. I mean, the, city, the citizens had a tax increase put on the agenda, and they didn't know anything about it. And now when you talk about the tax increase, it really just blew up the whole budget discussion process. Right. You're talking about a bond, so that strips that facility improvement portion out of the bond, and it goes back into the budget as far as having a tax increase. Mm-hmm. So, and so, then what I'm hearing from some some key people behind the scenes in the city is that, I mean, like the effort, but we're talking about a, a huge maintenance problem. $600,000 right. every year is not helping. Well, yeah, but we don't have a capital fund. From what I understand, there's no fund that money is being set aside for these these major capital outlays mm-hmm. on taking care of facilities maintenance, well, whether I mean, it's the roof of the building or, or air conditioning systems or park renovations. Yeah, Council Member Kittrell a couple of years back proposed that, and, and the city staff this year presented that to the council and told them it would probably be like a two-cent tax increase, mm-hmm. and the council oh, didn't boy. make any direction towards moving in that direction. Yeah, so. but that's not going to fix okay. anything. <laughs> so, okay, so I've got a, I've got a question. This, the staff spent all of this time putting – a great report together. They mm-hmm. did a really good job with what they were given, the time they were given. Mm-hmm. And so they've included in this facilities maintenance. And then all of a sudden, the same night this is presented, the councilman Mercer proposed the one cent to take out some of those facility maintenance. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, it goes back to just, just so we understand. People, and you don't get this because these votes are not, these, these discussion items are not getting voted on, so mm-hmm. the newspaper's not reporting on them. When they initially talked about the bond a couple of weeks prior to that, um, 
Miss Glover put it on the agenda about the bond. Council member, uh, was it, uh, Smiley put on there to increase the taxes. It didn't even get a second. So, right. I mean, they didn't even vote on that. That was the cricket night, right? Yeah, that, that was the cricket, <laughs> cricket night. night. So, I mean, that that would have been, that was the time the public knew this was going to be a discussion. That would have been the time to do it again. But for some reason, no one thought about it. Mm-hmm. And then here we come back, back to this discussion when they were just supposed to be talking about the bond. Councilman Mercer puts on the agenda about a tax increase, and then they vote on the tax increase. A council member wasn't there, and not knowing that they were going to talk about this, because I'm pretty sure Kenny knew they were going to talk about a council tax increase. She would have rearranged her schedule Tried to, to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's just shocking the way everything took place. So, I think that was the same well, meeting I, that they also passed an eminent domain property. Uh, yeah, they oh, yeah. did. Take back. We've done that in a long time. One of the time. first ones I've heard of in, in a long time for a long greenway. Time. It's just well, nice I, property for a greenway. I, well, yeah. I may be, you know, sadly mistaken, but I find it hard to believe that you'd bring up something so important as a tax increase no matter the size of it, and not have prior discussions at all with any of the other city council members. I'm sorry. It's too big of, a, well, of an issue. <laughs> that doesn't mean they haven't had discussions. It just wasn't public. All right. Sorry. Had to correct that one. <laughs> I had the question. I'm sure <laughs> I'm, I'm not I'm, the only one. I mean, maybe it, it, just went, it went too easy. It went too fast. Exactly. For, for that to come up unannounced and get voted Really, with I don't know how much I, discussion I think, there was. I think the three votes that he needed knew about it. Exactly. I mean, that's the way it seemed like. Three votes exactly. he needed knew about it already. It just seemed like the staff spent all this time and tax dollars putting all this into the bond, and then all of a sudden it snatched out and nobody knew it was going to happen. I'm sure they would have re- done this a different way had everyone been aware that they might be heading in a different direction. So, I mean, the, right now, I mean, this budget process, I mean, if, if my papers weren't clipped together, i just throw them all over the place. It's all over the place now because if they do pass the tax increase, you're looking at a bond with two items on it, street improvements and parks. Right. I mean, I know we're going to talk about parks a little bit. And today. public safety. Yeah, and, uh, is there some, what is in there yeah, for public, public safety? Yeah, public safety. Uh, it's just some, main, uh, some um, building. Or well, something. I think we're doing public safety at a later date. I mean, Terry, we one are. of the things you it's wanted to talk about a little million. bit was uh, parks, which I think is $10.5 million. More than uh, that. Yeah, yeah, ten and a half million. You're right. So let's talk about that. Let's let's go into parks and and just really quickly before we do it, taxpayers, one hundred fifty thousand dollar property uh, on this bond. If they did a, I believe there's discussion of twenty eight million dollar bond. This is outside of the tax increase you may get next month. Uh, you're looking for about sixty dollars a year for every hundred fifty thousand dollars that your property is valued. Yeah, go ahead and look at those that if you did the five percent because that's what the total is going to be anyway. So it tells you if you do the five cents. If you do the five cents, you're talking about seventy five dollars a year. <laughs> that's on top of pick communities for last year. Yes. For hundred. Yes. So, so. The citizens are possibly looking at wealth these combined together because they need to realize that um, it was a proposed tax increase, but if the bond passes, it's going to be an additional tax increase. Mm-hmm. So looking at a five percent jump in our tax rate. That's right. Five plus, cents jump. Plus jump. what was passed at the last election for the Pitt County, Pitt Community College bond. And if you're a small business owner. If the if the um, the uh, the property tax thing doesn't stand, I mean the privilege license thing doesn't stand with General Assembly. Right. I mean the City Council raised privilege license um, last year. People, a lot yeah, of people don't understand that. There's either. a good chance that's going to go away if that's money that's going to be gone for. And them. I think all of this discussion about you saying let's just toss this aside, it, it all it just comes back to the point. It there's so much to be discussed. There's not enough time. This is the kind of discussion that needs to be had before we sit down and even think about putting together a vote. Well, and I, what I ought to do is just challenge the residents of Greenville, too, um, for this. You, you need to be involved in the budget uh, discussion because next month they're voting on your budget and they're possibly voting on your tax increase. If you've got concerns, you need to show up at City Hall and have that discussion and, and objection or agreement, whatever whatever way you feel and, and is I, right. And I think that's why when you get fresh faces in the council, like when me and the mayor came on there, the mayor was like, look, you know, we're passing this $100 million budget for the city council and we'll see it twice and we vote on the next time. Exactly. No, that's why we broke it down and have these 13 intense budget workshops where we went through everything line by line, department by department, and we were able to find efficiencies, fund some maintenance, and, um, and keep the tax rate the same. And the city council did not do that. Um, and I think that's why we're seeing the kind of, I mean, it's really a, a big mess right now. That's what's going on with this budget process. One more point. The the 1% tax increase, um, if, it, if it is passed, can go 
they can say it goes for one thing now, but it can really be used for anything, anything they, they want, want oh, to. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they want to. So budget is the general no, fund. It's, that's right. I mean, by, by law, the budget is passed every year. We do a two-year budget cycle, but we still vote on it on the second mm-hmm. year as well. I mean, any council can change that anyway. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of increases that's been in, that's put in place that's been used for other things. So well, they can say facilities maintenance, but they don't have to use it for that. Mean, Absolutely not. Well, not hey, all. that's part of the discussion about the exactly. $5 million set up for the roads. They don't have to use it especially if they get this bond passed. But let's go into um, talking about the recreation and parks bonds. One of the proposals that the city put together was slightly under half, maybe 40% of, of what they wanted for the bond is going to be used just for recreation and parks. Uh, I know you guys, before I walked in the door, were, were talking about this, but let's talk about recreation and parks and, and kind of have some input on are we going in the right direction. Well, I think the one thing that bothers me is the new parks. I, I just don't see how if we're – having all of this discussion and we need money to run what we already have i do not understand and and once we repair what we already have that's still got to be maintained after that because that's what's happened now we have a mess because some of them weren't maintained maybe because of lack of funds i'm not blaming anybody for it but i'm really not understanding the amount of money they're asking for some of these new park developments when we need so much done to the existing parks and just don't seem to have the money to move forward with brand new parks. I'm not objecting to finishing some of the Greenway because it is a project that we've started. That's my whole thing. Let's finish what we've got, repair what we've got, and then maybe in another few years bond, like you're saying, maybe we might have to come back in four or five years and do just a park bond. I don't know what the answer is, but this just seems overwhelming. We've got develop a Westgate neighborhood park. Westgate is where, Dennis? Yeah, across the street from the old Lowe's, right? Right beside Bajangles? Is that, is that uh, Westgate? Westgate, sub- well, I'm not sure, but the Westgate subdivision no, is that? over in the hospital area. Oh, so no, no, speak. no. That's the apartments um, ac- across from Zaxby's, uh-huh. that area, okay. the apartments right, across from Zaxby's. Right, exactly. Where that um, homicide, the homicide that we mm-hmm. had this year was located at. That's right. That's that area. I know you've got to the park uh, on Highway 33 East over by the new Lowe's. The east side. East side park. Marion's Park. Hey, well, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they want to develop the initial phase of the park, 450000 That first Westgate was 375000 proposed. And then an acquisition, I guess, let's see, Phil Carroll property. We talked about that a little bit. Yeah, that land was donated to the city. And pretty much green, uh, GUC um, created an a easement back there that, is, that now you can drive back there. And the city wants to put picnic shelters. But, I mean, right now, open it up, let the public start fishing in the lakes and ponds back there. The Boy Scouts already use it for their jamborees. I mean, just utilize what we have until we get the money to um, to go and make those improvements. Mm-hmm. Well, Dennis, we're going to have to take a quick commercial break, uh, come back in a couple of minutes and wrap the show up. It's been a great discussion. So yes, we've got we'll a lot more to talk about. We'll continue for a few about. more minutes, <laughs> and we'll be back in two minutes to wrap it up. Welcome back to the Greenville Grit. I'm Terry Williams with Michael and Dennis today, and we've been discussing the beginning of a long monthly discussion, I'm sure, and maybe even longer than that, of the proposed bond. And um, I think just a few things to wrap this up. We'll continue the Recreation and Parks part of the bond discussion next week. But there were other um, other parks. Dennis, and Dennis, we discussed that a little bit um, some changes to Greenfield Terrace, which already seems to have had quite a bit of work done over there. Mm-hmm. It's very nice. Tell, tell us what they have at Greenfield Terrace now. And there's a community center out there. There's uh, some walking trails out there, basketball courts, um, a new playground set. So it's really mm-hmm. nice out there. There's talk about another spray park. They yeah, but, talked about putting it in Paramore. In Paramore but, Park, but we talked about it. I mean, that's a well-utilized park, and there's no parking, no parking. Out, at, at all out there. So No parking. At, J.C. Parking park, first. to me, seems like a you know much better location than that. But So we have the next week city council meetings. Can you sort of tell the public how the budget discussion might take place next week? Well, the, the, what was supposed to happen is, and I don't know how everything's going on with all those different things that happen, the next meeting is supposed to be a, a public hearing. Okay. Um, but I don't know. I got to look at the schedule. And then after that, that meeting, the city council, the next meeting, the city council votes on the actual budget. So they hear from the public, make any adjustments that need to be made, and then they vote on the actual budget. Um, but I think what they probably do is have some discussion first on the tax, the proposed tax increase, um, and kind of what the direction that's going to put the bond in. But who knows? Anything goes with this city council. Mm-hmm. We'll come there and add on 
something else on the agenda or, 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 or maybe just sit quietly and look at each other for the next hour. <laughs> well, the agenda um, <laughs> wasn't ready. I tried to get um, a copy of it. So, But Monday night, meeting starts at 6, so you think they may do a public hearing, but we really don't know exactly. Mm-hmm. And then the next meeting would be Thursday night where they could possibly vote that quickly on the budget? Oh, yeah. I mean, they don't meet in July. So the budget is going to be passed in yeah, it's June. Be passed, but definitely. they could have another meeting at their third, third meeting, meeting, meeting in June, third which third seems to be maybe what they might have to do. It depends. I don't know. I mean, people, they, people, you've got to show up. You've so got next to show up. So next week on Wednesday night, we're going to try to delve into the proposed budget, if they hadn't voted on it Monday night, and just um, try to put some discussion out there so we'll know what's in that budget. What are they proposing? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think I mean, the citizens, I think a lot of, um, especially this this last year, are really not paying attention to what's going on in council. Right. And so many different things are happening. So many changes are being made. And, and um, a lot of different um, do as I do, but I mean, do as I say, but not as I do, things are happening on the city council. And public need to be aware of it because, I mean, right now we're, we're playing with people's, people's tax dollars and people's money right now. And I don't see any clear direction of mm-hmm. what the city is trying to do what's what's the vision what's the outcome well, from let, all this stuff dennis let's talk about direction i mean and, and you say that because there really isn't i mean some of it is retracting some of the things that you guys have done not, not a lot but some things and discussion of tax increases i don't know how forward thinking this is because it's not solving the problem but our biggest thing our, our biggest opportunity for the city of greenville especially i think it was labeled one of the best uh cities in the state to invest in mm-hmm. Is economic development. Yeah, that's we're right. We're not talking. We're, about we're it. not looking for new revenue opportunities, which is growing that tax base um, and, and allowing businesses to come here, starting getting more housing developments and stuff like that to come here. And you grow your tax base, and you have more money. Right. And I mean, and if not, next year is this going to be a problem? And the year after that is going to be a problem. So I keep on saying again, this council has not said the word economic development one time during this whole this whole term in office. Well, that, that's that's going to be sad for the city too, because in order, I feel very strongly, in order for a town to grow, you've got to bring jobs. I mean, and uh, people want some some council members like to say it was coincidence. I like to say it was not because it's the first time it's happened. But that office of economic development, and I put our focus on that. We created jobs, mm-hmm. actual jobs. I mean, you have the forty-two million dollar development coming up downtown, the other downtown development projects. Things were happening. Mm-hmm. You know, I think. I mean. We could have continued that momentum, and we could have had a lot more things happen. But right now, we're in a standstill. Well, we are going to talk a lot about this over the next uh, year on the bond, over the next month on the the budget and taxes. Um, but we got to wrap our show up. We got to think again. The Overton Group and Greenville Toyota. We got to thank our audience for joining us and for the support that you are giving us to be on the show. And if you have any questions, make sure that you email us at greenvillegrit at gmail dot com. Terry, you want to wrap it up? You have a grit. Don't, my the biggest grit is give the public a chance to talk about this before we railroad everything through too quickly because there are lots and lots of questions. You can see we've already covered it in two shows and just barely touched the surface. All right. Well, look, we will see you next week. Tune in again Friday night and Saturday morning.